KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, April 8th, and it's finally here. It is Eclipse Day. I don't know if we've talked about it enough. Mark. I don't know. <laughs> have you not heard about this at all? If you haven't, we've got you covered today. And Mike, <laughs> our Eclipse Authority, your time to shine has arrived. <laughs> uh, funny you use that, that phrase, time to shine, because there's not going to be a lot of sun shining today, unfortunately. Yesterday, of course, we cleared out quite nicely in the afternoon, and now overnight, as expected, the humidity has come in, and it's going to continue to pump on in here. Look at that dew point is now at 61. When that front moved through yesterday morning, we started off uh, with dew points in the, in the 60s. They dropped down a good 25 degrees or more just in the span of less than an hour. That dry air moved on in here. Anyway, back to today, obviously, the humidity's come back in here. We've got a lot of low clouds hanging around and we are going to be hitting 80 later on today for a high temperature, which is just about normal. Now, as far as the uh, aquifer and the allergens, the aquifer did go up one tenth of a foot. The allergens, we do have a lot of oak out there, but boy, that's I mean, just hardly anything compared to where it was last week. So hopefully we are getting out of the peak of the season. All right, let's get right into looking at some of the uh, temperatures around here. Definitely on the mild side, the humidity is back. Notice how we have dew points in the the 50s in portions of the hill country right now, but all of this moisture will continue to stream on in here. The one thing that kind of helps out as far as the hill country is concerned going up 10, you've got the escarpment right here, which kind of add, acts like a almost a little bit of a, a, a block or roadblock if you will, with all this low moisture coming on in here. So basically just high clouds out there. It's the low clouds that really kind of, you know, hang over things. High clouds, you can see a few thin spots here, which is what I think is going to be the the best we can really hope for. There's going to be a little bit better viewing in portions of the hill country. If you go out west and down to the southwest, where that is the, the path of totality as well, we're still going to have a lot of clouds around here. Again, a few thin spots. Yes, temperatures will dip a little bit right there at totality, of course. We're still going to see, the uh, best way to put it is if we have all these clouds out here, quickest sunset you've ever seen. It's going to get real dark real quick, obviously, and then lighten back up if there is total cloud cover out there. Then after that, we're going to have to uh, be on the lookout for some stronger storms. Here's what the computer models look like. And again, that moisture continues to come on in here. All of these low clouds by noon and early afternoon, a few thinner spots and a little bit of clearing in parts of the hill country that will fill in fairly quickly. And then we've got to uh, be on the lookout for some of these showers and thunderstorms storms mainly up to the north of us, but we do have the risk. Storm Prediction Center does have us on a, a two on a scale of one to five, a risk for isolated, strong to severe storms, high winds and hail. This is going to be late this afternoon, not during eclipse time and then going into the early evening hours. I do think most of those are going to be further on up to the north, but then that will continue kind of lulling the action, but we'll still have that chance around here tomorrow as well, because later on this afternoon, the atmosphere is pretty volatile. It's going to be pretty primed for some of these storms if something does decide to pop. And wouldn't you know it, after tomorrow, we got fantastic weather. Timing with the eclipse just is not working out. One thing you have to watch out for uh, later on this morning and this afternoon, the traffic. And RJ, of course, Traffic Authority is on top of that. What's going on, sir? All right, yeah, Mike, we do anticipate that things are going to get very busy as we make our way through the rest of our morning. Now, things looking pretty good right now, but again, a lot of people are going to be on the roads, especially out to hit up the hill country or the northwest side. So we will continue keeping our eyes on that. So I want to start off with this camera here. I-10 at Bernie East, mild marker 552, and you're already see obviously the signs there. If you've driven around any parts of San Antonio, you've noticed all the signs just uh, letting people know to plan ahead to be prepared for a lot of traffic, a lot of congestion on a lot of our roadways. So here's one of our cameras there, I-10 Bernie. Speaking of the Hill Country, again, an area that uh, is expected to be very busy even uh, before, during, and then after the eclipse. As far as our current road conditions, we do have a car fire being reported right now. I-10 eastbound, the access road at Pine Street is going to be right off of 37 and I-10. We are starting to see a little bit of traffic uh, delays in this area, so something that we will continue to monitor, but it is off to the access road, not on the highway. We do have another crash being reported here uh, by the airport. That one's right there at 410 and Airport Boulevard and uh, just popped up on our maps right now, so we'll continue to get more information on that accident here over the next uh, couple minutes or so. But again, biggest thing that we're seeing right now as far as Transguide, uh, again, not too busy, but we are anticipating a lot of people to hit the roads for Eclipse Day. Whether they're going to be able to see all of it or not, it's still going to be definitely an event across the Hill Country and San Antonio area. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was killed on I-10 on the city's east side late last night 
happened around 10 p.m. at I-10 near Dietrich. Police said the man was having vehicle problems on the side of the road when one of his dogs got out of the vehicle. As the man was chasing the dog, police say he was hit by a commercial vehicle and killed. One dog was seriously hurt while the other got away. The driver of the commercial vehicle pulled over to try to help. Well, today all Eclipse preparations turn into reality. We have talked to TxDOT urging drivers, about rather of TxDOT, urging drivers to plan for possible heavy traffic. County leaders in Bandera say they're most concerned after the eclipse yeah. when everyone's course is ready to go home. Our Avery Everett shows us how construction closures on Highway 16 could have an impact on your trip. Cowboys aren't the only ones coming through Bandera Sunday night. Ahead of the eclipse, it's cars, trailers, and a whole lot of out-of-state traffic. A lot of people from uh, like Germany and uh, England, so it's been, been a good time. Some only come the distance of San Antonio. We've just been coming back and forth. And others cross country. It's a 10 hour drive. As people start to settle at their eclipse viewing destinations, some say traffic hasn't been that bad near Bandera. I haven't run into any issues at all. I, mean, I keep saying it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. It's going to be bumper to bumper. We have had no traffic. But that might not be the case through Monday. We're standing right now in what would usually be the outer lanes of Highway 16 headed into Bandera. But as you can see, it's shut down because of construction. This highway is now one one lane in each direction and county leaders say that's why they have concern on Monday night into Tuesday morning after the eclipse. That's when we feel like we're going to have the largest amount of stress on the community and on our roads and on our resources is when people decide to go home. To help minimize delays, TxDOT is avoiding new lane closures and construction Sunday through Tuesday. Lanes that are already shut down, like here on Highway 16, will stay closed, but contractors won't work through mid next week. Right now, people say the roads are mostly clear. They were so scared about like the cell service going down and everything, uh, but we haven't had any of that. It's been great. It's just been a lot of fun. But as the eclipse crosses over South Central Texas, officials want to make sure people know that could change. With the influx of traffic, TxDOT has restrictions on some oversized truckloads in certain Texas counties. We have that list with dozens of names on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. And as we get set to see the eclipse, how will the flash of darkness impact all the animals out there? It's something the San Antonio Zoo is thinking about as well. Uh, while workers there can't predict exactly what will happen, their theory is that once totality hits, many of the active daytime animals will start prepping for nighttime. The zoologists are all ready to take advantage and learn more about how the animals react. If you don't already have plans for the eclipse, zoo staff says they are open for business. And today, of course, we will be live on air and online from noon to 2 p.m. We'll provide you with the live coverage throughout Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, and places throughout San Antonio. As you can see on your screen there, we have teams all of those at all those locations to choose from many different streaming locations on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, on your smart TV. And you can scan this QR code on your screen right now for everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse and you can access it all. You'll instantly see videos and articles that will help you navigate here in San Antonio and up into the hill country. Well, passengers on a Southwest Airlines flight out of Denver got quite a scare as the engine's cover apparently came off after takeoff. The plane quickly returned to making an emergency landing. No one was hurt. And investigations now are underway. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details. Passengers on the Southwest Airlines flight watched the terrifying moment play out from their windows. The engine cover of the Boeing 737-800 appeared to rip off during takeoff yesterday, then strike the wing flap. The flight attendant walked back, looked out my window and went, oh my God. One passenger on the Houston bound flight says she felt a jolt before looking out the window and alerting flight attendants. There were a lot of people who were really quite nervous. Lots of, don't take off your seatbelts. Uh, hopefully they're going to get us on the ground. They must be turning around. The flight with 143 people on board returned to Denver to make an emergency landing. While the plane is made by Boeing, the engine is not. In a statement, Southwest Airlines calls it a mechanical issue, says our maintenance teams are reviewing viewing the aircraft. The FAA has opened an investigation. It comes after another Southwest 737-800 experienced an engine issue last week. That plane was forced to abort takeoff in Lubbock, Texas, after the crew reported a possible engine fire. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York.
Jump into morning sports. The visiting Philadelphia 76ers fighting to move up from that eighth seed in the East while facing a Spurs team fighting for every win they can get before the offseason. First quarter, Sixers Kelly Oubre Jr. gets the steal, heads the other way where he gets the bucket against Wemby. Highlight of the first frame, Wemby going to the hoop for the slam while he's guarded by seven-foot center Mo Bamba. Spurs led 64-54 at halftime. Let's take you to the fourth quarter. Spurs would lose Keldon Johnson to a left-foot injury on this play, heads to the locker room and would not return to the game. That's when the Sixers close the gap. Nicholas Batu makes a three-pointer right here. To give Philly a one-point lead with nine seconds to go. Spurs respond when Wimby finds Julian Champagny open to the corner for the three. And the Spurs lead 111-109 with 2.7 left. Then the Spurs forget to play defense. Tyrese Maxey goes solo to the rim to tie the game. And we're headed to overtime, 133-126. In overtime, Sixers by one. Devontae Graham makes a three-pointer. And San Antonio leads 121 with one, uh, 119 with one minute to play. Philly has some great passing, and K.J. Martin ties it with this dunk. We're headed to double overtime. Spurs would take a three-point lead on this three by Malachi Branham, but Philly does all the scoring after that. Martin caps off the win with this alley-oop dunk. Spurs lose an exciting game, and here is your final score. Spurs lose last night. Do we have the final right there? I don't see it. Well, Spurs, Spurs lose in double <laughs> over time. Oh. Oh. Fought so hard. I know. It's okay. We still love you guys. It's 5:11 and 68 degrees. Just ahead why NASA is warning against pointing your smartphone directly at today's solar eclipse. 68 degrees at 5:12. It's muggy out there, which means clouds and yes, there will be clouds during today's total solar eclipse. Mike has our forecast when we come back. Spurs lose 133-126. 5-15, today's the day the total solar eclipse will cross the country for the first time in seven years. As ABC's Christian Cordero reports, from Texas to Maine, hotels are booked, highways are crowded, and some places have even issued a state of emergency. This morning, millions of Americans are hoping for clear skies to experience their excitement in totality. We came down here for the eclipse. We're keeping our fingers crossed for the weather. I got the uh, certified safety eyewear. I got UV filters for my camera. The path of totality across the U.S. spans from southern Texas to northern Maine. Along the way, a boom for local businesses between rental cars. We're fully booked right now. That's one thing. So even if they call us, we don't have and homes. According to Airbnb, one out of four guests with a reservation has booked a stay along the path of totality. Texas is among the most booked states. Indianapolis, the most booked city. The increase in travel means extra traffic on the roads and in the skies. They even told us to maybe be prepared to sleep in our store if we needed to. The FAA has issued a travel warning saying the eclipse combined with spring break could cause delays, but you don't need to be in a classroom for this science experiment. We've been talking about coming here for this event since what three months before she was born one for the history books for those lucky enough to witness as they do have weather concerns but are really hopeful that we're going to have a very good experience it's going to be disappointing definitely if it's cloudy next time it's going to happen in what 20 years or something Yes, the next total solar eclipse for us in the U.S. will be in 2044, though only some of the upper Midwest will see it. Another one will happen the following year in 2045. That one will stretch from California to Florida. Christian Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Scan this QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse. 517, 68 degrees. Taking a look outside with Transguide, RJ looks like he's on the phone with Transguide. We have an issue here at 37 and 10. We see those flashing lights, and I think that's an 18-wheeler that looks like it's on its side, maybe a possible fire. Yeah, he's nodding his head, he's yes. He's nodding his head, mm -hmm. yes. So he will give us an update when we come back. I'm the richest guy in the world. <laughs> Hi, baby. I have inherited the best traditions. This for you? I have a great boss. Thank you. It's me. How do I look? I have people. People I can count on. I have time to give. And a million stories to share. 
If that's not rich, I don't know what is. The key to being rich is knowing what counts. Nature's Bounty Hair Growth. Help grow thicker, fuller hair with just one capsule a day of Advanced Hair Complex. Conquer hair thinning. And fall in love with your hair all over again. Only from Nature's Bounty. Purina is supporting more touch therapy dogs to make a difference in the lives of more kids like me. Purina cares here. Welcome back. Just about 521. Yeah, we're not even at 530 yet. Things are already starting to get a little crazy on the roads. Yeah, guys. So we have an 18-wheeler situation going on right now on the uh, near east side as we take a look here at 10 at 37. And uh, we're trying to figure out what exactly was going on there. Just got off the old trans guide. They said that this 18-wheeler, uh, looks like the trailer caught on fire here in the eastbound lanes of 10 right there at 37. And uh, Last I just heard right now was that they may, uh, in fact, actually shut down I-10 right now as crews continue to try and clear out this 18-wheeler uh, that apparently caught fire a little while ago. So again, this was initially reported by the San Antonio Fire Department as a uh, as just a car fire, but now we do see that this uh, may be a little bit more serious, especially uh, in this part of the area. Let's show you your maps real quick. And again, this is right there at that intersection of 37 and I-10. So it's a little bit uh, past Hackberry for all of our folks in that area, and we're trying to get a couple of different cameras here show you uh, but I show you some different angles of what's going on there but again I-10 eastbound at 37 we also have a crash being reported here near the San Antonio Airport that's gonna be loop 410 westbound Airport Boulevard of course airports actually this morning might be a little bit busy folks may be coming in last minute to try and get out to the hill country and into the northwest side to come and check out some of the eclipse action that we've been uh, getting here over the past couple of days or so but again biggest thing we're seeing right now 37 at I-10 uh, this is gonna be I-10 east and it looks like uh, officials right Right now are shutting down uh, the highway at this time so something to keep in mind if you are about to head out already very busy out there mike how are things looking outside this morning not great for the eclipse all right as far as totality when it occurs 130 is the 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 broad number we are looking at obviously a couple of minutes after that depending on where you are it does include the northwestern portion of uh, san antonio and bear county and obviously the closer you get to the center of the path uh, out there in bandera about four minutes of totality three right around Helotus, and then just over two minutes right there uh, up around stone oak area and uh, maybe two and a half going over toward 10 and 1604. So again, right around 130, give or take, and that's going to be when the uh, totality occurs. But here's the problem. Look at all of the, well, you got the, the moisture. You can see that mist and drizzle, a little bit of that uh, kind of murky look right there along the horizon. Plenty of low clouds hanging around here. The humidity, which had dropped down substantially yesterday afternoon, has definitely returned. We continue to get this, this flow coming in here off of the Gulf of Mexico. And with that, you get those low clouds hanging around here. And sometimes those are pretty stubborn to get on out. And that humidity is going to continue to increase even this afternoon. This is going to be uh, kind of helping the atmosphere become more volatile later on this afternoon. So we've got two different things we've got to talk about today. First of all, as far as the eclipse, uh, some patchy mist and drizzle around here this morning. And then at the time of totality, right around 130. Yes, temperatures will be dropping down. Even if you have a cloud cover, it's going to be like a very quick sunset you know it's going to take place almost instantaneously and then obviously come back that will help to uh, knock temperatures down somewhat then we'll rebound then we are going to start to see a few scattered showers around the area high temperature today up to 80. here's the problem we've got the low which is bringing in the high clouds which sometimes can get kind of thin out there but we are dealing with all of the low clouds coming on in here so that's where that's the the big fly in the ointment if you will which is what this can computer model does show there's the flow of clouds coming on in now by 1230 going in toward one o'clock maybe a little bit better in portions of the hill country of course this is uh, in the the Edwards Plateau on the other side of the the escarpment right there we're going to have a lot of low clouds hanging around here then we have to go into this afternoon we've got the threat for some showers and thunderstorms most of those are going to be up to the north and then by tomorrow morning we get another round of potentially strong to severe thunderstorms storm
Prediction Center does have uh, most of the area in the threat for an isolated storm. Pretty volatile atmosphere today and then starting off tomorrow. And then as most of these are going to be north and northeast. And up there around San Marcos, Austin, you've got a much better chance to see something potentially severe as far as tomorrow is concerned. And then wouldn't you know it after that? Great weather. So for today, a lot of clouds. I think the best we're going to hope for. Obviously, some better viewing out in northwest in the hill country, west and southwest. Still a lot of clouds, maybe some thin spots here and there. It will get dark very quickly when that eclipse does occur. And then we'll have some of those storms later on. Tomorrow morning, especially in the first portion of the day, showers, thunderstorms, maybe on the strong side. That front comes on through here. And look at the timing. Perfect weather to finish up the week. More after this. Stick around. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple is officially allowing retro game emulators on the App Store. Those apps will allow users to purchase games that comply with piracy laws. Until now, game emulators had been banned from iOS, but some users had used workarounds to get the emulators on their phones. Next, Google is said to be working on a way to look up a phone number that just called you. Internet sleuths found a new look up button in the beta version of the Google Phone app. When you tap that button, it brings up a Google search with the number already entered. And and Eclipse advice from NASA. Think twice before taking pictures with your smartphone. The agency says your phone sensor could be damaged if it's pointed directly at the sun. NASA says hold Eclipse glasses in front of the device when shooting at any point other than totality. You could, of course, always just enjoy the Eclipse and not let your phone overshadow the moment. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Okay, that one was good. Okay, and ahead on GMSA, we'll hear from Adam Kasky and Justin Horn, who are totally broing out in Fredericksburg, and they're <laughs> visiting with folks from all around the world. Good morning to you. It is Monday, April 8th. Happy Eclipse Day. Happy Eclipse Day. I don't think we've talked about it enough, guys. <laughs> I don't think we have. Wait, what day is it today? Yeah. <laughs> So we have a lot of moving pieces. I know you're going to Transguide later. You're going to be at the Rim later. At the uh, at the, the Rock. The Rock. Out there by La Quintera. And then we've got, obviously, Justin and Adam out in uh, Fredericksburg. And Mia and Sarah are going to be at Awe Elementary. And then Spreester and Jen, Tobias Drusky, are going to be out in Bernie. So we've got, and we're going to be streaming all of that between noon and two. Right. There's live streams, all four channels on that. And then David and uh, Ursula, of course, are going to be here on air. Just kind of dipping into everything and showing what's going on around here. As far as the eclipse, uh, there's the uh, the center of the path and the totality out in the hill country um, is potentially, obviously, the best viewing. Begins everything just after 1.30 this afternoon. And out here in the hill country, going to have uh, a little roughly four minutes of totality and probably the best opportunity to see the eclipse with some thinner clouds. But this is what we're dealing with right now. Plenty of clouds around here. Moisture continues to stream in down here at the surface, which is adding to this low cloud layer around here. 69 degrees right now, so very, very warm. The humidity, which had dropped down a good 25, 27 degrees as soon as that front moved through yesterday morning. It was gorgeous in the afternoon. It has come back in here. This is going to help to feed and keep these low clouds around throughout the day. 50s and 60s right now. Uh, maybe a light little jacket in parts of the hill country. And again, the humidity is still quite high. Now out there in the hill country, it's a little bit lower. And again, we've got the escarpment right here, which tends to sort of block sometimes that that low level moisture from coming on in, which is one reason why there's a better opportunity to see the eclipse out in north northwest out in the hill country. So a little bit of patchy drizzle, some mist out there this morning, even a couple of patches of fog. Haven't seen anything too thick right now. 75 at noon. Temperatures will be dropping down. It will get dark. Even if you've got clouds out there. Yeah, you'll definitely see the effects of the eclipse eclipse and then uh, we'll have some showers and some thunderstorms then later on this afternoon with some of those potentially on the strong side. So a couple of uh, little more breaks out there in parts of the hill country early afternoon. And then we have to watch out for some of these storms, like I said, later on this afternoon and eve early evening hours. Then again tomorrow, some may be strong, potentially severe. We'll talk all about that and talk about some just perfect weather, of course, 
after the eclipse. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, you got your hands full already, and this has nothing to do with the eclipse. Yeah, right? nothing related to the eclipse out there, but we did get confirmation that I-10 eastbound at 37 has been shut down as crews continue to work on this 18-wheeler fire. As we take a look at here at our camera there, I-10 in Hackberry, you see that no traffic's getting through here. These are the eastbound lanes of I-10 right there. You see 37 crossing over I-10 and the I-10 running underneath 37 right there. So there's an 18-wheeler fire that went ahead and shut down the highway. Let me show you another shot here. So this is our camera there, I-10 at Press, and you see that all traffic is being diverted off of, I believe that's a exit 574 in that area. So uh, you still can get on 37. If you need to go north and, bound, north and southbound on 37, you can still do that, but we're not getting any traffic through I-10 eastbound right now. As we show you our maps, and again, this uh, incident right here, right after 37, or right underneath 37 right there, on I-10 eastbound. So basically, we're going to see traffic backed up all the way coming in from the South Presa area. You could also exit South Presa if you need to get around this area right there. But basically, the uh, Hackberry, the Pine Street area, that's going to be all shut down for the time being right now. We also have this crash being reported at Loop 410 westbound at Airport Boulevard, not causing too many delays out there right now. So the biggest thing we're following, I-10 eastbound at, uh, at Presa, at Hackberry, at South Pine, basically right there, that mix of 37, that has been shut down for the moment because of an 18-wheeler fire that was reported, I would say, about 30 minutes ago. So we will continue to follow, give you more updates on this. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Millions of Americans will be looking up to the skies today to witness a rare total solar eclipse. People have traveled from across the country and beyond hoping for a great view. So our meteorologist Justin Horn and Adam Kasky are in Fredericksburg and they show us how that town is getting ready for all the visitors today. We've been here in Fredericksburg for a few days now and we've noticed a few common themes, mm -hmm. upbeat, cheerful people, but we're not exactly seeing the crowds and businesses aren't seeing the crowds that they may have expected. With that being said, uh, we still met a lot of people from around the country and around the world for that matter. So where is the farthest that people have come? France. We have people in town from France. Did they get a pair of boots? Yes, they did. It's kind of a must. Turns out Europe is well represented in Fredericksburg for the eclipse. Where are you from? From we, Poland. From Poland. Yes, from <laughs> Poland. Love it. People from all over the world come into Fredericksburg. Thank you very much. Welcome to Texas. And the country, too. We met Lori Wright, who traveled from Palm Springs. So this is actually my first real visit to Texas. And what do you think? I love it. Well, everyone says you all. It's, it's just, it's like for real when you just hear it otherwise, but it's people, people really people say it. They really say it. I know. No, but, but it, I love it. It hits you like, what's all this y'all? Every it sentence does. begins with y'all. And there were plenty of y'alls to go around today. Despite that, businesses in downtown Fredericksburg report sales aren't exactly where they expected them to be. We asked if locals thought the crowds were overly large. I haven't noticed it. That's why we came downtown to see and I haven't noticed it. What do you think it'll be like tomorrow, even busier? I think so, I really do. A good thing, considering several stores featured Eclipse-themed merchandise, like this candle, which we'll be putting to good use. If we light this candle Monday morning, will the clouds part? Yes. Oh, baby! <laughs> Woo! All right, we're going to take all of them. There are uncertainties with the forecast and the cloud cover, so we're doing whatever we can. <laughs> we're lighting the candle. It's going to work. It's going to work. We're going to get great weather today. And by the way, don't forget you can join us online and on air. We'll be bringing you live coverage from Fredericksburg during the eclipse. Join us. It's going to work. <laughs> Heck yeah, if there could be a Spurs candle, right. there could be an Eclipse <laughs> candle too. So as Justin said, thank you guys. As, uh, they, we will be live on air from noon to two. We'll provide you coverage throughout not only Fredericksburg, but Bernie, Kerrville, and places all throughout the San Antonio region. You'll be able to choose from many different streaming locations on ksat.com, the ksat plus app on your smart TV as well. Take out your phone, scan this QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse you can access it all. Well, on to other news now in New York, a close call involving another massive container ship at a bridge less than two weeks after the deadly bridge collapse in Baltimore. Pictures show the 89,000 ton marine vessel resting close to New York's Verrazano Bridge. The U.S. Coast Guard confirms the container ship had experienced a loss of propulsion Friday night and getting within striking distance of the bridge. Three tugboats were escorting the ship and were able to tow it until it regained propulsion. 
United States, Australia, Japan and the Philippines held joint military drills in the South China Sea yesterday. A statement says the drills are meant to demonstrate the commitment to strengthen regional and international cooperation in support of a free and open Indo-Pacific. China has claimed many islands within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone in the contested waters of the South China Sea. The United States is ready to defend its assets if Iran attacks them. U.S. officials believe it's inevitable that Iran will attack U.S. or Israeli targets in the Middle East as early as this week. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, Iran is angry about Israel's strike on its consulate in Syria last week. We're very concerned about a pending Iranian attack somewhere. The U.S. will defend itself if Iran attacks an American target. That warning yesterday is from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. He says the U.S. is prepared to defend any attack and respond swiftly if, if necessary. U.S. officials predict a significant Iranian attack on American or Israeli assets in the Middle East as early as this week. I know the president and his team are working hard to prevent escalation. The potential danger from Iran comes after an Israeli strike on its consulate in Syria last week. Now, the Israel Defense Forces say they're preparing to deal with Iran, quote, offensively and defensively. It doesn't make sense to keep on uh, fighting these arms while letting Iran itself get away from it. The Biden administration says if Iran attacks Israel directly, it almost guarantees a regional conflict. Syria and same extent Lebanon are both launching points for Iranian attacks against Israel. Israel says it's moving into an offensive phase along its border with Lebanon. It's been exchanging fire with Iran-backed Hezbollah forces that are in that country. Lebanese people do not want to see an expanded war because the last time Hezbollah and Israel went to war, it was really bad for the Lebanese people. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Monday morning, 541, 69 degrees. Up next, if you're trying to check out the eclipse today, we'll show you some places right here in San Antonio that are right in the path of totality. Outside with live cam, still plenty dark for most folks out there. We've seen a mist and drizzle on a couple of trans sky cameras around town right now. And we're going to get you updated on that incident over there at I-10 and I-37. Be right back. 545 thousands and thousands of people made their way to the Texas Hill Country to get the best seat for today's total solar eclipse. But you don't have to leave town to experience totality. Daniela Ibada takes a look at some of the places right here in San Antonio that are in the path. It's a once in a lifetime event. My siblings, sisters, nieces, nephews will be there. And so we're excited. It just uh, seems like something from the Bible, <laughs> like prophecy or something. A total eclipse is set to cast its shadow across the country, right through the heart of Texas. Lots of people are picking their spots along its path. We'll probably come to the dog park. I work from home, luckily, so uh, I'll be watching it from the backyard. I'm going to be with my family, and we're going to watch it at my parents' house. So we already have the sunglasses or the eclipse glasses, and just going to make like a lunch out of it. Took the day off. Maybe we can come tomorrow and check it out at 1.30 if I can get off of work early. For the true eclipse experience, every second and mile matters. And if you're in or near San Antonio, you don't have to go far. If you want to be just within the path of totality, you can come here to McAllister Park. Here, you'll get 35 seconds of darkness. The time frame where you'll experience darkness will jump up significantly here in Stone Oak. Here, you'll get about a minute 20 of total darkness. And one of the prime spots to experience the longest duration of totality is here at the rim. Here, it's about two minutes and 38 seconds of totality. Despite the less than ideal forecast, totality seekers aren't letting it cloud their plans. We have some like uh, wine that's like moon themed, so probably bust some of that out and have some and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see it pretty good. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. If you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of like, are you on the edge? What parts are of a town are on the edge? I believe 410 and 10 is really that line of demarcation on the edge right there. There's a Target parking lot that I have my eye on. But right now, you can go to KSAT.com. We have an interactive map posted for you showing the eclipse and the path of totality. Just look for this article. My friend Sarah Spivey did a great job breaking it all down. I checked out that interactive map this morning. I live on the far north side, just to the west of 281, and I'm in the path of totality for two whole minutes.
Aren't you so lucky? Can I come over? You can, you can come <laughs> over, but I recommend you stay a while because the traffic could be <laughs> right, kind of weird. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Speaking of traffic at 547, let's take a look out there. 410 Jackson Keller. Some folks are hitting the road on this early Monday morning, and we're still watching that incident over there on I-10 uh, at 37. Okay, taking a look outside with Transguide. RJ Marquez on his way to Tex to Transguide, but we're looking at an incident at 10 and Hackberry. This mm -hmm. is another view of that shot of that 18 wheeler at 10 and or 30, 10 and 37. Yeah, correct? It's, it's, it was a vehicle fire involving uh, some sort of big rig. I 10 eastbound at I 37. Uh, RJ said before he left that they had reopened that left lane, and that's the traffic coming at you right now. But be advised over on the east side, 10 at 37. We do have this incident and responders on the scene. And like we've been talking about traffic uh, later on this morning, but especially when it's over with. You right. Know, like, like somebody used the example, it's like going to the Dome, going to a Spurs game, you know, Just you plan. filter in, but when everybody leaves at the exact same time. So. Well, I like the trans guide sign that they've been posting all weekend long. It says arrive early, stay put, leave late. What if everyone leaves late together, though? <laughs> That's true. I like, was like, That's what, true. What a, You're darned if you do, darned I don't if you know. don't. I'm also, <laughs> when you leave late, if you leave later on uh, and this afternoon, we're going to have to be on the lookout for some uh, potentially strong storms around here. Back to the eclipse. Uh, yeah, the weather is not cooperating. Just to kind of, you know, cut right to the chase here. Partially blocked. And there may be a few thinner spots here. These would be some of the low clouds depicted in this picture. And then the higher clouds, which hopefully would break up somewhat in the, uh, the hill country. Yeah. Yes, it's still going to get dark. And if it's cloudy out there, I mean, think about it when the sun goes down, it's cloudy, it, it gets dark. So it will still get dark very, very quickly. It's going to be a really, basically a really fast sunset if it is uh, dark, if it is uh, cloudy. And that's going to be the situation throughout most of the area, like is the case here at 10 at 410. And you can see that kind of hazy look right there along the horizon. That's all that uh, humidity hanging around here. Here is the eclipse forecast Some patchy drizzle, some mist. Roads may be damp this morning, even a patch or two of uh, fog here and there. And then as the eclipse takes place, perhaps a break in the clouds or a thin spot. I guess is the best way to put it out there, especially in portions of the hill country. Uh, but for most everybody, it's leaning towards it's just going to be on the, the cloudy side today. If we like I said, if we get a, a small little peak here and there, if you get a thin spot, great, but I wouldn't really count on it. And then we're going to have some showers developing later on this afternoon and even some potentially stronger storms. So here's the uh, satellite picture right now, and you can see we do have some clouds hanging around here. Notice how these are coming in from the southwest. These are the high clouds that are showing up on the satellite picture, which that low is pumping on in here. Those are the ones that at least you can sometimes kind of see through. But the problem we're facing is the low clouds coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico with all that humidity. So that's what's going to be happening throughout the course of the day. Now, jump ahead to later on tonight or later on this afternoon. There is the threat for some strong, potentially severe storms, storm prediction center. The atmosphere is pretty primed. Now, the way it's looking right now is the majority of anything is going to be further up to the north. That's going to be the situation tomorrow. But notice how the threat does get bumped up, especially up by Austin and northeast of there. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. So again, this would be late this afternoon, evening hours, bit of a lull in the action, then it picks back up again in the overnight hours. And then that's going to be the case throughout a good chunk of the day tomorrow. Then we have a front moving through and, and of course, you know, like last week was perfect weather. Even yesterday was great weather. And then once we get into Wednesday, the humidity drops off here and we're going to have a fantastic stretch of weather. Just not today. All right, here's the forecast today. We're going to make it up to 80. Lots of clouds out there. I don't think there's any better way to spin it. If you get, like I said, a thin spot, a break, fantastic. A little bit better viewing opportunities northwest out in the hill country. 82 tomorrow. We'll have some showers and a few thunderstorms, potentially strong late today, dinner time. Same thing tomorrow, especially first portion of the day. Then we're going to clear on out and a great stretch of weather throughout the rest of the week. More after this. Stick around. The 2024 Fiesta Bike Parade is happening on April 13th. It's an event for all ages and will celebrate bike culture here in the Alamo City. Read more about it on KSAT.com. Top stories coming up, including the update on the eclipse forecast. 
And right now you're looking at the situation out there at I-10 eastbound near Hackberry where we had a vehicle fire earlier. It looks like a big wrecker is now on the scene out there. Uh, one lane is open moving through that area. We'll be back after this.